to another Key Point Intelligence Video Insight. My name is Randy Dazzo, Chief Strategy Officer at Key Point Intelligence. And I'm joined here by a very special guest today, Mike Scrutton, Director of Print Technology and Strategy at Adobe. Hello, Mike. It's uh, great to see you again, and I hope you're doing well. Doing well. Thanks, Randy. Always great to have a chat. Great, great, great. So, you know, for the folks that are watching this for the first time, can you give them a brief background about yourself and what you do at Adobe? Yeah, I've uh, been with Adobe over 25 years now. I'm native of uh, Great Britain. I hail from the island, uh, moved to headquarters about 15 years ago. Um, I don't actually live in the street outside the office building, but I live in the <laughs> Bay Area. This is our headquarters. And uh, it's always sunny in California. So it's uh, right. <laughs> uh, my role at Adobe is, is really one of being responsible for a lot of our print strategies. Um, I've been my entire career in the world of print and printing. Um, and the software around print, everything from workflow, from creation through to, to print and manufacturing. Um, but spending a lot of my time on the technology that we actually use to actually take the stuff off the screen and make it real, make it physical, make it so that people can touch it. Excellent, excellent. Well, good. Well, so since you've been with the company for a while, let's go back to the early days of Adobe and you know the vision back then around PostScript. I know that you know obviously that's part of the printing system that you've. Uh, uh, are quite familiar with, which was quite innovative, uh, you know, for its time, you know, as a page description language and how that core technology or vision has been the path to other Adobe technologies today. Can you kind of like describe that a little bit for us? Yeah, yeah. Um, Adobe started, you know, was founded on the rock that is PostScript and that technology. And, and, and basically what was happening at the time, um, late 70s, early 80s, computing was becoming more prevalent in the world. We were doing more stuff digitally or using the power of a computer. Um, and one of the things that PostScript uh, enabled when it was created was to describe how somebody would create or assemble a page. How would they design a page and how could they share that information with somebody else? The whole idea of a page description language, it really was a language which describes what a page should look like. And it was quite innovative. It was sort of, it's hidden within the internals of a system. But until that point, you know, a lot of the computer work that was used to describe how something should be printed, you know, kind of used a world that described the content that was to be printed, but not necessarily the details of how it should be laid out on a page. Um, I mean, a good analogy today would be possibly the world of the web and HTML. Um, or maybe even a, even a tweet. You know, when you, when you put something on Twitter, you think about the text that you put out there. You don't think about how it will look, the form, the, how it will flow, compared to something like Instagram maybe, which has a layout of how, so you get an idea of how something will look. Turn the clock back 40 years, you know, PostScript was the technology of its day, which allowed you uh, to describe in the computer how something should be presented. Now, reality is people didn't program PostScript. They mm -hmm. used tools, they used word processors, they used other tools to do design. And it really got its start, you know, a big boost when Apple adopted it uh, as part of their, of the Apple Macintosh, this idea that what you see on the screen can be captured in a language and then print it. Um, and that was really, really, really powerful at the time. Yeah, I, I remember, um, you know, taking the raw code that came out from, uh, um, you know, PostScript, and it was Eng English language, basically, versus the traditional escape codes that I used to have to do, escape backslash and all the other, you know, uh, garbly goop that you'd normally see. It was right. truly a, a real language that uh, not only was for the printer, but was also for the display or any type of output device, right? Right, absolutely right, absolutely right. Now, now, when it comes to having or understanding this concept of language that can support a consistent output, uh, whether it's on a printer or a display uh, or, or, or on a mobile device, why, why is that important for you? Yeah, it, it was really a key benefit of PostScript in the early days. So we think about um, when people were doing, were creating stuff in those early days of desktop publishing, you know, printing could mean any number of things. It could be printing a newspaper on a great big fast press that had to print thousands and hundreds of thousands of copies in a small amount of time. Uh, it could be printing for a book or a magazine. It could be printing a brochure or, or let's say the church newsletter on a little laser printer in, in your office. And what PostScript allowed us to do was to capture how the page should look and leave it down to the individual printer to interpret that at the highest level possible to get the best quality result. You know, the, the, the technology in that cheap office 
relatively cheap. It was expensive at the time. But, you know, that printer that you would have in your office, of course, was completely different techno from a technological perspective than what you would do to actually print something for a newspaper at the time, right? But PostScript allowed you the same technology, the same tools to be used to do the design, whether or not you were printing for that church newsletter or for that big publication. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, this is kind of the beginnings of this idea of consistent output. You know, you could, you could print one place and print it somewhere else and it should look the same. Roll the clock forward, you know, that's become really important for us because now, you know, we consume information in different ways. A lot of the information ways we consume information is on a screen. But again, when you can use the same core technology to display the idea of what something should look like on a screen. And screen now means, you know, your workstation, your laptop, your tablet, your mobile phone, your watch even, you know, are all different ways we interact with screens. In the same way that printers have different underlying technologies under them as well. But if we can describe it once, in a way that can be repurposed, reprinted at the highest possible quality for that particular technology, that's really one of the core benefits that we have with the underlying technology from PostScript that is what gives us. Um, now, there may actually be additional tools that we use to actually display it on all the different services, but having that single source of truth means that we can always get the best results, whatever technology we're using to share the information with the final um, consumer and that's really important for people who are care, care about how things look and feel and that might be because you're an artist or it might be because you're a marketer and you're trying to preserve a brand of a company or you're trying to convey information you really want to sort of convey what the designer has in their head what the artist what the customer has in their head and make sure you can share that with um, the consumer of the information whatever device whatever surface whatever substrate they'll be looking at the final product on so, so, you know, going from the historical timeline of PostScript moving to PDF, which really embraces very similar fundamental concepts mm -hmm. of PostScript, why, why is it even more important in today's mobile, uh, you know, environment, and not even just for mobile, but for cloud and other IoT devices, as well as for print environments too? Yes, when, when PDF was first created, it was a way of actually taking the layout and putting it into a file, which you could transfer and share with somebody else, mm -hmm. and they could view it or print it. Um, and I remember the very first time I saw a PDF file, it was a, shared with me on a floppy disk, and it was a catalog for a shop, I think it was, all right? Um, but that, that was quite novel, but we could take, somebody could create this electronic document and share it with me, you know, on this physical media, and I could see this mm -hmm. thing on my screen, and I could print it locally on my computer, mm -hmm. all right? Now, Wind the clock forward, you know, internet is pervasive, the web is pervasive, we're sharing information all the time, we get it from a variety of sources. Um, having that common truth that we can share with different people and that they consume it in different ways. Um, so, and that's really what's at the heart of the PDF file. It's, it's the idea of having a document which we can see on any device and we can interact with in different ways. You know, the idea that we might read, you know, jump to the index, look something up, go to some other section, uh, read about that or read something from a table of contents i want to read the article about kittens so i'll skip to the article about kittens um <laughs> in in a pdf file or jumping around an annual report you know looking at it closer zooming out so the pdf actually made makes the document interactive but the real common the good thing about it is if it does give us this this common truth irrespective of the device that we're using irrespective of where we got this pdf file from um, and as more and more devices are connected to the internet and it's easy to share these, these documents, you know, the idea of being able to print a document directly on a printer so that I can read it on a plane, I can consume it at my desk, I can consume it on my couch, you know, it's, it becomes really important that we're using the same technology um, wherever we might be consuming the information. Um, does the same technology in, in concept also exist in Adobe's embedded print engine technology today? Right. So what's really important about the Adobe Embedded Print Engine um, is that it builds on the technologies that Adobe has developed over the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. And it's the same technology inside our print solutions as it is in, in terms of our desktop and mobile solutions. So the, same, the exact same code which will display to you a PDF file in Adobe Reader on your laptop or on your tablet is the exact same code 
which is inside the Adobe Embedded Print Engine. So you can be, con you, you know, you're going to get consistent output because mm. this is one of the problems. It's a bit of a, of a dichotomy. You know, we've talked about how PostScript and PDF means that we can print this content on any one of a number of different devices or view it on any number of different screens. But how do we know we're doing that faithfully? Now, we implement the same specification everywhere, of course. It's a public specification. We do that well. But what the extra layer of trust that we can give to our customers and to our partners is it's not just what we're interpreting the same specification. It really is the same code that's being used from the same people mm. that's showing you this thing on the screen as is on the printer. Um, which also, you know, is helpful because it means that we can keep the two in synchronization, you know, as as the standard evolves and how we display things on a screen evolves, so we can evolve the technology that's in the printer as well, it means we've always got the latest and greatest technology in the printer um, to give that consistent output. You know, in document integrity is so important today, uh, you know, especially, I mean, it doesn't matter whether or not it's for legal purposes or just for general business purposes, uh, you know, having that consistency, that integrity, um, definitely sound like great advantages. What 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 are some of the other advantages uh, of Adobe's embedded print engine technology that that make it unique, you know, for users? Yeah, what well, we one of the things that we've seen, and particularly these COVID times, have actually exacerbated this as well. You know, it always used to be that people would create their work and maybe print it in a in a fixed location. You know, I I remember the day when we always used to go to an office and sit at a computer tethered by a network cable to a wall. And, and I would print my work on the printer, maybe you know in my cube or down the hall. Um, and there are, there are a limited number of devices that I would use to create my document. Mm -hmm. And uh, I limit, frankly, a limited number of printers on which I might wanna print that document. Right. Okay. Um, so the same story, which was the foundation for us doing, you know, of the internet and sharing documents across the web, you know, has become really relevant now that our work styles are changing. Yeah. You know, we spend a higher proportion of our times now working from home or working remotely, uh, working away from that, where that printer would normally have been. Um, and I think this is where, where the technology that we have becomes really important. That, that idea that you can trust what you've seen on the screen is going to come out of the printer the same way as you saw it on screen. All right? mm -hmm. So that later on, maybe the printing will be delayed by a period of time. Uh, maybe somebody else will be doing the printing for you. Uh, maybe you'll print it only when you get to the office. Maybe you'll send it to an online print service and they're going to print it and then put it in the mail and deliver it to your doorstep. It's an increasingly right. common way of working, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll be printing it locally because now I have a laser printer, you know, at, at home. Maybe I never used to care about the quality of printing at home. Maybe the printer at home is only for, you know, printing recipes and the kids' homework. Well, maybe now I'm using that printer for, for, for work as well right. now. Right. Yep. So, <clears throat> so the fact that we're using this technology and can apply it in any of these locations and expect to get the same quality of output is really important. You know, if I'm if I have a particular brand color, you know, Keypoint Intelligence has a, an orange uh, mm -hmm. in your logo. We have a, a shade of red in the Adobe logo. Mm -hmm. Well, when you print that at home, because and you're going to print something out and send it to somebody, you want that shade of orange to be the same color as if you're printing at the office or if you're sending it to an online print provider, this consistency of output is really important. And because we don't know where something is gonna be printed, we can't always you know, do a final print and then look at it and, and change it if we didn't like it before we send something to the customer. This idea of trust that I am really gonna get what I expect um, from a quality perspective is really important. We're used to this idea even going back to the time of desktop publishing 35 years ago of, you know, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. All right. And we used that a lot in the nineties as a, as a phrase for desktop publishing. <laughs> the WYSIWYG right? phrase, right? <laughs> right. WYSIWYG. And, and, but, but really, I mean, we don't think we really realized what we were getting ourselves into. You know, WYSIWYG on a screen, a very pixelated screen at relatively low resolution compared to the 4k monitors yeah. we're using today. Yeah. You know, when we came to print it in color, very often we get something in higher fidelity when we printed it on a laser printer than we saw it on our Macintosh screen. Right, right. right. Um, now, yeah. you know, <laughs> this idea of, of what am I gonna get is mm -hmm. really, really important to people. And, and display technology and screen technology has, has, has accelerated, you could argue overtaken. 
right. But right. people's expectations of what you are going to get has risen, all right? People are used to the idea of computers being able to do this effective shading and rendering, and rather than being just big blocks of primary colors with solid rectangles around them and solid text, you know, we'd be, we used to the idea of having seeing reflections in the table of something which, which is sitting on it, or um, the idea of applying shadows to photographs in a document, or these really subtle effects that, that make a document on screen become alive, you know, sort of look real rather than just being in a computer, right? This virtual mm -hmm. world that we create in our screens. When it comes to print, all right, we want to have that same experience for the printed, printed sheet as well that we're getting and, and sharing with somebody. So you know, we don't want the, the, the printed thing to be a, an inferior version of what we might see on the screen. And, and we want that wherever we happen to be printing. So mm -hmm. it's, this consistency is, is so important. And, and what the pandemic has taught us and what working remote has taught us is we really do want to have this quality wherever we are, wherever we're printing, however we're creating the content. Yeah, and I don't know if people realize the importance of that, you know, especially knowing that there is, you know, this continuum of devices that go from, you know, very simple inkjet printers from the home to potentially, you know, a larger A3 printer all the way up to these production devices, high speed, you know, inkjet devices that are printing out a number of different things from statements to brochures that where, mm. you know, that, that consistency of color there is so critical and so important. Um, and now that we're seeing this pervasiveness of, uh, I guess, these new work styles of having to, uh, you know, work from home in some cases a couple of days a week and also work in the office some days, you know, you're going to be, you know, working with different technologies and potentially, um, you know, having some differences and, and, and people don't even realize that there's going to be differences potentially with ink, ink versus laser, it could be the technology, it could be the brand, um, you know, and, and with each of the manufacturers potentially having their own drivers, uh, you know, that have different uh, dither patterns and stuff like that, right. you're going to get different output. But when you have right. something that's consistent, like, you know, Adobe's engine, you, you're definitely going to get something that's much more consistent than going from one brand to another or one technology to another, right? Yeah, and, and something I hinted at right at the beginning was this idea that, you know, the person creating the content might not know where this thing is going to be printed eventually. But that's, that's true. And, and, and we you talked about how you might go in and edit a postscript file or as opposed, which was easier than editing escape sequence you know, <laughs> right. i defy anybody nobody basically starts pulling the cables out the back of their printer and trying to work out how to make it print better today right we, do, we don't do that we used to do that we used to be engineers and do that sort of thing but yeah. <laughs> people expect things to work and so they should all right it should yeah. not be the problem of the customer to work out how do i fix this print quality problem all right it's not the yeah. customer's problem it's our problem it's the, it's the printer manufacturer's problem but as we expect everything to work in these different ways, you know, different technologies are used on different, are still used on different devices. You know, yeah. if I have an Android phone or I have an Apple tablet or I have a Windows laptop, all right? Fundamentally, these are using different technologies to work. They're also using potentially that they've each got to speak to the printer um, I could take be creating my content, I could have a PDF file, for example, I want to print it on, on my same printer from these three different devices, depending on where, where I read my email or where I downloaded it or where I created that content. Mm -hmm. So one thing that's really, really key in 2022 is the fact that there has been consolidation in the standards powering these different technologies mm. to help us get this consistent output. So for example, um, Android uh, and the printing within Android and Mopria, who've done a lot of work with the right. setting print standards for Android, together with Apple and what they've done with AirPrint, mm -hmm. increasingly now, and, and AirPrint on mobile devices and also on their desktops and laptops. And now Microsoft, with the way they're going with their print technologies, there's one really key technology which all these different platforms are standardizing on to try and make it easier for users to get this consistent output. And you know what that one technology is? It's PDF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is really, really, really important. I mean, it's a huge, gonna be a huge boon for the user. So yeah. the example you had about different drivers having different dither patterns and all this sort of thing. 
uh, which was a problem of the past because different fundamental technologies were being used to get something from that device, from that client device, from that laptop, whatever, to that printer. Everything's becoming to be standardized around PDF which you know make means that there's an important role for us to play you know as the creators of pdf and as the custodians of the embedded print engine to make sure that people are getting the best quality pdf when they're printing from all these types of devices no matter what device that they're using um and 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 i think that's going to be a very key thing uh for everybody going forward yeah, yeah, totally. And again, it, this is not just for printers, but also for different screen technologies and, and things like that, too, where you're going to get that same consistent look and feel, um, regardless of the output device. Uh, again, output being print screen or any other type of output device. Right, right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, with, with the advent of COVID and this new, you know, new uh, work from home work style, um, we, we see A4 devices also becoming more pervasive in the hybrid working at home mm -hmm. environment. Um, you know, in our research, there are a good portion of home users that have to, you know, even choose their own technology and the company re reimburses them for it. Um, you know, what, what, what technologies would benefit home users and, and how is Adobe supporting the vendors offerings for those types of printers? Yeah, there's a number of changes that we're seeing there, Randy. Um, home users tend to be very price conscious. Mm -hmm. um, increasingly, they're quality conscious as well. Um, yeah. And making sure that the quality of output and the consistency of output, you know, is really has really been a key thing. Um, there's a couple of things that we, we have done there. Um, one of which is, you know, the Adobe Embedded Print Engine is a relatively new departure uh, for Adobe. Um, less than five years old. Mm -hmm. um, and, but it's been designed as a new technology. It's our first new printing technology in about 15 years, hmm. but it's really designed to take advantage of this embedded print controller. Hmm. You know, rather than just the Adobe printing technology being the domain of the big enterprise, uh, enterprise solution or the big commercial printing press, you know, what's key about the embedded print engine is in that name embedded. Mm. And it's really down in the details as far as the consumer is concerned. You know, the, for them, surely the important thing is the Adobe bit. But but the key thing about and why we put embedded actually in the product name, it's been designed to fit on the very modern technology, which is powering at the heart of these things. And we probably you may have heard of of um uh, embedded technologies and processes like ARM, you know, the, the ARM processor is is uh, well known now, uh, powers a lot of our mobile devices, increasingly printer manufacturers are putting it inside their printers as well. Mm -hmm. But but, uh, but the technologies that we have and have been designed specifically to run on these low power, uh, low memory, uh, increasingly very performant and very capable systems, but it requires a re-architecting. So, I mean, that, that's probably the number one thing. Um, that we've done and that and so our, our vendor partners are able to leverage that and and put our technology in a smaller printer where normally they may not have been able to do so interesting There's another technology as well which i think is is emerging uh which um is beginning to be relevant maybe more in the future and that's the the whole iot mm. connection to the cloud thing mm -hmm. um where the technology is emerging so that you can have a very um, light footprint, we would call it, but basically a, a, a very depowered printer and have all the, um, the heavy work um, happening in the cloud. And that does not appropriate for every single situation. You know, there are many situations where that won't work for folks, but in a situation where particularly, you know, in a, maybe in a night for an IT department who wants to deploy the same consistent technology to a large fleet of, uh, of their users, some of whom they won't be able to walk up to and just, you know, uh, and, and visit because they're scattered in, at homes up and down the land. You know, the idea of centralizing some of this stuff and doing some of the printing technology in the cloud and distributing that data down to the, the printers, wherever they might be, that might well be appropriate as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so this different sort of this combination of technologies, you know, the idea that we can embed all this goodness into a relatively small footprint on a device Mm -hmm. but have the flexibility so if the partner requires you know they could run it in a cloud and in a more of a shared environment you know we've got all these different technologies available 
Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I can also imagine that the print stream itself uh, is smaller too, because uh, again, it, you know, with, with people actually printing and potentially sending things, uh, you know, to other locations, you don't want to be taking up a lot of bandwidth and the speed and in and, and that architecture should be streamlined in a way that, um, you know, we're not clogging up the internet at the same time too, we're not taking hours to, uh, you know, to print things or send things, uh, you know, yeah. to other locations and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's certainly a key thing. And of course, working at home, I've spoken to lots of people who, you know, have to kid their kick their kids off YouTube or their favorite streaming service because <laughs> they're trying to be on a Zoom call now. And and, right. and to some extent, you don't want printing um, gumming up works in the same way. I think the good news there is, although that there's a lot of data to be thrown around in it, when you're printing things across the cloud. Yeah. Um, and ten years ago, our, we would have been aghast with our dial-up modems of sending this data <laughs> across our dial-up modems. In the world of streaming video, actually, we're not talking something particularly for the sort of thing you might want to print. True. True. In comparison to to you know sitting on the couch watching streaming and the kids down the hall watching something different maybe it's not such the problem what we thought it was 10 15 years ago because and that's another good thing about the rest of the world gaining in infrastructure it means a lot of the technologies that we, we've had in labs for enough for some time now actually become practical mm -hmm. uh, and ready to deploy uh, right. in this type of environment as well when it comes to the manufacturers of you know these a4 devices what can they do to help message the advantages of the technology it doesn't even have to be the a4 you know manufacturers it could be anyone that's you know supporting this new work style um what, what can they do to help message the advantage uh, of the technology um you know to help differentiate their offerings I think. yeah this is something that we like to do and, and i think at the end of the day we're meeting our, our consumers, we're meeting our customers, we're meeting our users, wherever they happen to be, whatever their world happens to be today, right? And, and the pandemic has really forced us to, to, to think like the customer, right? Think about how, what are the pains and the problems that they have? Mm. And, and one of the things that Adobe has been key on is that, you know, we're there with our partners, helping to, to promote the benefits of these digital workflows to show that these things are possible. You know, some, like I said, there are things that we've known we can do for some time, but maybe didn't the real benefit of these things didn't wasn't apparent. And so rather than talking in terms of what benefit statements and all this sort of things, it, you know, it's really about being able to articulate what are the problems that the customers are having yeah. um, and sitting in their shoes and being able to tell a story to them how they can use this technology, how they can use the technology from Adobe, how they can use PDF, and how together we can create these fantastic solutions to give the customers exactly what they're expecting. And it doesn't matter if that customer's, you know, somebody sitting at home running their own small business, or whether this is an IT department looking to deploy a consistent output across an entire fleet of devices, or you're a multinational and you know you, you've got to handle multiple locations, office locations as well as home locations. The whole thing is scalable. And I think that's one of the things that um, the last 40 years of Adobe has taught us and taught the world is that we have this core foundation of technology, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. same technology which is available everywhere and to anybody uh, and is at the underpinnings of all these technologies and it's there for everybody to use. Yeah. Maybe to kind of summarize things a little bit, um, you know, I think it's important that people do realize that, that there are some differences here and of course having that uh, consistent output in, in that things are going to print correctly are what's really going to benefit the users. You know, users don't typically think too much about printing, but when, you know, there are challenges and problems and, you know, if something doesn't print out correctly or doesn't print out at all, uh, that, that's when you hear, you know, the, the issues come out. And, you know, what Adobe is doing is they're taking that pain away of, uh, you know, of those challenges so people don't have to actually even worry about those things that they're, you know, you are, um, you know, somewhat guaranteeing that you're going to get this consistency, um, you know, regardless of the, the, de the device that you're using or the technology that you're using and uh, that, that people just don't have to worry about print. Absolutely. Right? And, 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 and what's really good is that you're getting uh, this professional quality wherever you happen to right. be. You know, the same technology that is inside the embedded print engine and inside our PDF products, our Acrobat and our, our reader products for working mm -hmm. with PDF, they're also within our creative products as well. You know, the same technologies that people are using, that the professionals are using to create magazines, books, publications, 
banners on Instagram, you know, the same technology is in the printer as is in Acrobat for viewing things on screen, is in Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign and all these wonderful tools that, that graphic artists use and depend right. on all the time mm -hmm. for the quality that they're outputting. You know, it doesn't matter whether what you're printing on, you know, is a four color CMYK printer or it's a high-end photographic printer with 14 different inks or it's a printing press printing um, high-end packaging with lots of different spot colors or whatever technologies are being used. It's that same technology that's being used in all these places. And we're bringing that little bit of a Adobe printing magic and we're able to apply it to everybody. I think that's, that's incredible. You know, that the same people that are producing these high quality, you know, brochures and professional print environments, uh, print service providers, that same technology is even in, in the printers that they have at, at home. You know, I, I think that this, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, fun time. <laughs> well, Mike, it's really been a pleasure talking with you today, and uh, I want to thank you very much again for, for joining us. Um, and, and again, for those that want to find out more information about uh, this technology, where, where would they get, uh, you know, where, where they learn more about uh, Adobe's embedded print technology? So you can um, go to the Adobe website. We're going to put the link at the bottom, probably here. <laughs> um, and, uh, and give you the exact address of, of where to go. We put all the information up there and you can find information about uh, the PostScript, the heritage of PostScript. Uh, you can find out more about our embedded print engine or other print technologies, maybe what we're doing in some of our other segments as well around the world of um, textile and packaging and stuff like that. Oh, but right. it's uh, all available on the website. Perfect. Well, again, thanks, thanks again, Mike. And uh, hope you have a great holiday season and uh, we'll be talking soon. All right. Thanks a lot, Randy. All righty. Take care. Bye-bye.